Hello, this is Mickey. How's everybody doing? And welcome back to the channel. Today, I want to call this session Back to the Future with Lightroom Classic. And I say that because we all know that throughout the year, Adobe adds features to Lightroom Classic. But what some people don't know is that some of these features that show up in Classic were actually features in Lightroom Desktop or Adobe Camera Raw earlier in the year. And if you know where to look, you can find those features and kind of play with them and get a feel for them before they finally end up in Lightroom Classic. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about two features that are in Adobe Camera Raw that hopefully within the next a few months will show up in Lightroom Classic, but also there is a feature in Light uh, in Adobe Camera Raw for denoise and sharpening that is unavailable in Desktop or Lightroom Classic, and it is a real stunner. If you don't use third-party software to denoise and sharpen, uh, you don't want to spend the money. You have an excellent one available to you in Adobe Camera Raw, and we're going to go through that. All right, to start off with, we're here in Lightroom Classic, and we want to move into Adobe Camera Raw. Now, there's two ways, to, basically, you can do it. You can go up uh, under Photo and choose Edit in Adobe Photoshop. And then from Photoshop, you can go into Filter Adobe Camera Raw. It's not the way I like to do it. You get a little extra benefit, especially when we talk about denoise and sharpening, if we go into Photoshop as a smart object. To do that from the menu, you're going to go to Photo, Edit in Photoshop, and you go all the way to the bottom, and it says Open as a Smart Object. And as you can see, there's a shortcut. That would be your Command Option X. If you're on a PC, it would be Alt Control X, and that's what I like to use. So I'm going to hit Option Command X, and it's going to go ahead and launch this photograph in Lightroom and as a Smart Object. And you know it's a Smart Object because of the little icon you see right here at the bottom. Now, as a habit, if you use Photoshop, uh, and I use it on occasion, you know it is a destructive process, so I always make a copy of the main layer before I start processing. And to make a copy, it's a, a shortcut of Command or Control on a PC, J. And that gives us an exact duplicate of the copy, and this is the copy that we're going to work on. Now from this point, if we're using a smart object, we do not want to go up under filter and choose camera raw filter because it will not be a true raw file being processed in Adobe Camera Raw. The best way to do it when you have a smart object is to double click on the thumbnail and that will launch Adobe Camera Raw and you'll be working on a raw object. Now the first thing that I want to show you that's available in Adobe Camera Raw that is not available yet uh, as a full functioning tool is the removal of people. And to get to that, we're going to go to the eraser tool at the very top. And you can see we have two distraction removal tools in Adobe Camera Raw. And what we're going to concentrate on these two. So the first one is people. And it's very simple. We can open it up and see what's available it, uh, or click on it. And it brings up and it identifies all the people in the photograph. Now, if you hit remove at this point, it will remove everywhere you see these people have been uh, highlighted in magenta. But for me, I don't want everybody removed from the scene. So to do that, I want to take away the magenta from the people that I want to keep. And that's what these little removal icons are here. So if you click on one of these removal icons and hit delete, it takes away the mask. You're not deleting the people, you're deleting the mask. And once you have everything set like you want, let's keep one other person, let's keep this young lady right here, and hit delete. All right, now that we have everything set that we want, you go ahead and hit the removal button. All right, once everything's been removed, you now can look at your picture, and you can see each area where there were people, and I usually go through and check each one and right here and you're looking for anything that doesn't look right that you might want to regenerate so here I'm not really liking what it did to this I would click on this and I would hit generate and what it's going to do is just generate that segment of the photograph and I don't like that so I'm going to hit generate again Well, for time's sake, I, I don't really like that one either, but we'll, we'll just call it good. 
So this is the easy way to remove people all at once, and it does a really good job. I think much better than using the uh, remove tool in Lightroom Classic. At, th at this point, I think Adobe Camera Raw does a much better job. After you get everything uh, the way you want with removal, you're just gonna hit OK, and that's gonna take you back into Photoshop out of Adobe Camera Raw, and from this point, you just wanna save it. And to do that, you hit Command S or Control S if you're on a PC, and that saves the file. As you can see here, it's saving it. It will save it and drop it right back into Lightroom with the changes that you have made. All right, so the changes have been saved to Lightroom. If we go to Lightroom, you can now see we have our photograph and we can start processing it the rest of the way that we would have any photograph that we do in Lightroom. Now one thing I want to tell you is that if you do like using adaptive color profiles, you need to do that before you go into Adobe Camera Raw because it's going to come back as a PSD or a TIFF file, however how you set up in your uh, Lightroom preferences and that profile won't be available to you anymore. So that's just one thing to remember. Go ahead and do your basic uh, changes with the adaptive color profile before you go into Adobe Camera Raw. Alright, let's look at the second feature that we have in Adobe Camera Raw that we're not seeing yet in Lightroom Classic. And that is reflections. So here we have a picture and, and this is not the best picture probably to do the example on. I'll give it to you right up front. I just didn't have any in my library. So this is actually a screen capture of a photograph that I found on uh, uh, SmugMug. Uh, just looking at different sample pictures. But it's a good example of what the possibilities are in this new feature. Again, we want to go into Adobe Camera Raw using your uh, smart, your shortcut keys or your menu. And we'll just do it with a menu this time. Edit in, open as a smart object. It's going to launch it as a smart object in Photoshop. You can see we have our smart object icon. We want to hit Command J because we want to make a copy. And then we want to double click on the thumbnail of the copy that we want to work on. From this point, we're going to go up to our removal icon and we're going to go to reflections. And all you have to do is click on it and you can have uh, three quality. I start with preview, but you have quality of preview, standard, and best. Each one takes a little longer. And for the sake of time, we're just going to hit preview and click apply. And as you can see, it does a really good job of removing just about all the reflections on this. And remember, this is just a straight JPEG screenshot that I captured. If we had a raw file bringing in Adobe Camera Raw, we would have a much better result. In any case, even if it doesn't get all, uh, all the reflections off, it gets the major ones that we might be able to use our removal tool to get some of these and clean it up just a little bit. In, uh, in Lightroom. So it does an excellent job and I have seen examples uh, from uh, other people that I know that have used it to that they took a picture from their hotel window and it really did a good job of removing that reflection from a hotel window of a scene outside the window. Alright so let's move on to this next feature that I just love when it comes to denoise and focusing in Adobe Camera Raw. All right, here we are back in Lightroom Classic, and we want to use Adobe Camera Raw to sharpen this photograph and to denoise it. And I know a lot of people use Topaz or DxO Prime or On One has a good denoise and sharpening product, but if you don't want to spend the money and you worry about it, you won't be able to sharpen or denoise effectively in Lightroom, you might find out that you're wrong because Adobe Camera Raw has an excellent product. Now this product is also in uh, Lightroom, but it doesn't work the same way in Adobe Camera Raw, and I don't think Lightroom Classic is as effective at clearing out noise and sharpening as Adobe Camera Raw. And one of the main reasons is, when you go into Adobe Camera Raw via a smart object and you process this photograph, it's processing it as a raw file. But when you do it in Lightroom Classic, it is rendering it out as a DNG prior to doing any focusing, sharpening, or denoise. And that is an extra layer that kind of complicates things. Adobe Camera Raw doesn't do that. It actually processes the denoise and the uh, sharpening at the raw level. All right, so let's just jump right into Photoshop. 
and we're going to do it again by menu Photoshop edit in smart object in Photoshop all right here we are in Photoshop and we want to hit our command J or control J if you're on a PC to make uh, an extra layer because we want to work on one without destroying the base layer next thing we want to do is go into Adobe Camera Raw and we do that by clicking on our thumbnail and here we are in Adobe Camera Raw now the area that I'm going to focus on of course is the, the little kit's face so we're going to zoom in so we can see our noise and our focusing it might be a little too much all right, so here we are looking at our fox. The first thing that we want to do is let's get rid of the, no the, the noise. So we're going to go up into the details section here and we're going to click on the noise. And it's going to start rendering the picture or getting rid of the noise. And it doesn't turn it into a DNG. It is processing it as a pure raw file as we uh, turn on the, the noise feature. Alright, so we're at about 50% and we can adjust it to get it just the way we want. And this works really quick. So you can see I can go all the way to 100 and it gets a little soft. But let's say we're at like 45%. That looks pretty good. And we can hit our little eyeball here. See before, after, before, and after. And remember we're at 200%. So don't let it fool you. This is still maintaining pretty sharp now we just want to hit our sharpening and this is what's so good about it in Adobe Camera Raw we can see our denoise and our sharpening without changing screens doing it all at the same time so let's go down to our sharpen and we'll run our sharpen up to about 60 70 percent and maybe move our radius up a little bit and take our detail up about to 70 uh, percent also now let's look at this before after before and after we might be able to take it up a little more let's see let's go to sharpening to about a hundred percent here and it's start starting to get a little crunchy but here we can play with the noise while we're here too and see if we can straighten up some of that so we'll take the noise up to 70 percent and it is looking a lot better now if you want to do a little masking on the sharpening if you hold your option key down and slide your masking it will show a mask of the areas that are going to be sharpened and we know sharpening is just uh, increasing contrast on edges so if we just want the edges the edges that are white or what are being sharpened we can decrease this a little bit to where we just get the edges and we're not bringing this crunchy stuff around the fox here so if that looks pretty good to you and I think it does let's click on it and look at our big shot uh, full scene that is just, uh, it's, it rivals, I think, Topaz and DxO Prime. It just really does. Let me move out just a little bit more. So let's look at our before, after, before, after. Excellent job for a product that you have available to you in Adobe Camera Raw. So after you get it exactly like you want, you can click OK brings it back into Photoshop you can hit control or command s it saves that file and drops it back into Lightroom and if we look at it in Lightroom here's our picture right here let's zoom in looks pretty good we're at 200 percent good eyes get little edges of the fur real good let's zoom back out look at our picture excellent noise reduction and sharpening that you have available to you in Adobe Camera Raw. Now what I didn't say, if you understand the controls in Adobe Camera Raw, they're exactly like they are in Lightroom. They're just, the interface just looks a little different. You're more than welcome to go ahead and finish the processing in Adobe Camera Raw. You don't have to bring it back out to Lightroom, but if you're more comfortable with Lightroom, go ahead and drop it, save it, drop it into uh, Lightroom Classic and finish up your processing. Like for here, we can finish up by maybe uh, doing a crop on it right here. And this little guy, he was so fun to photograph. All right, so as you see, you have a lot of new tools available to you through Adobe Camera Raw, using it as a smart object to take the benefit of this uh, denoise and sharpening that you won't get 
uh, in Lightroom Classic at this point in time. If anybody has any questions, be sure to drop me a note. Leave me a, a comment in YouTube and I'll get back to you and help you out any way I can. And I hope you guys have a good uh, summer and I will talk to you soon.